Hey, you want to talk about battle aces, guys? Uh, let's talk about battle aces, okay? Let's talk about the current state of the RTS games, and this one we're going to look at is battle aces. I don't have any graphics for you to pull up right now. Sorry about that. But I would say battle aces is, in my opinion, really fun. It's really good. I am curious what is what the like that game is going to evolve into even more with how it's going to be developed. But I feel like uh, Battle Aces at its core is a fun game. I feel like the the best way to describe Battle Aces in a really simple way is it feels like a custom game inside a StarCraft engine that is like a micro arena. It's like a bunker war or it's like a zone control or something like that. It's it's kind of like you have like a spawn point and if you just hold down one button, you can like turn it into like you can make a unit every like two seconds and it just spawns out of your base repeatedly. And uh, you're just constantly trying to like battle your opponent and you guys have the same amount of money. It's not like one player has more than the other. It really just depends how you invest it, like if you expand first or not. But it really does feel like you have an, you have an eight unit capacity, an eight unit limit, where that's kind of your build and your opponent has one as well. And the fact that you can see your opponent's units, like, you know, there's no tech structures in that game. So there's no signifiers to be like, oh, he's got a star port. He's got a star gate. He's got a robo. Like, you don't know what he has because no one has anything. He either is going to make one of two things that gets announced. And it's like, he's going for tech number one. He's going for tech number two. And it I literally announces it and it shows you a graphic if you hit space bar or whatever that shows you what units are being unlocked for the fact that he's now doing that. So essentially, there is no scouting and there is no surprising your opponent in terms of tech in that game. There is, however, still scouting and surprising in terms of where you decide to move your units because there is fog of war in that game. So you still do have to scout despite what a lot of people were saying where you don't have to scout anymore, you, you do, because you don't know where you're gonna get attacked. And the positioning is honestly really important in RTS. So uh, I feel like it's, it's developed in a way that's a little bit more approachable. It's a little bit more casual oriented. And I feel like that's actually a good thing overall. I don't think every single game that gets made at RTS going forward has to be super casual. But I do think uh, games need to have something that allows it to be approachable by a player in some way. And I feel like the, the method that Battle Aces has used where they've really like made it no longer a problem of having to build or manage an economy or make a build order or realistically, uh, the build orders in Spring Gate are, are in, uh, in, zero, in Battle Aces. The build orders in Battle Aces are so simple. It's like you hit Z and you've now expanded or you hit like X or whatever and you've now teched. Uh, well, if you have the right amount of money, it's super, and it does it for you. It like automatic, it presets locations and stuff. It's super, super, super casual. Uh, but at the same time, the game also has micro. The game feels very polished. It like it feels as good to micro units and battle aces basically as it does in StarCraft 2. Like the units are very responsive. They look clean. They move cleanly. It just it feels like it operates how it's supposed to. Like the game runs correctly. There is definitely a level of polish there where the units and the animations and everything is is running correctly. So the game feels good to play. And you can definitely have different skill expression through micro. And that, that game is literally a glorified micro arena. It's just a micro fest. Uh, and it's it it does it well. Like you can definitely have, you're gonna see a, a better player at micro always beat out a worse player at micro if there is a difference in skill there. But if players are, you know, similarly skilled, there's a lot of variables that can happen uh, where like positioning again can happen. Um, you know, composition can happen, whatever. Cause now everyone's running the same composition. Uh, and there's like obviously a lot of wiggle room for players to beat and lose to each other, but the game feels good to operate. It feels, it feels good. So that is a big win for Battle Aces. Out of every RTS coming out that's like been announced or like has some type of like play test in 2024, Battle Aces absolutely is by far the most polished and it feels the most, you can you feel it when you play it. You're like, damn, this game feels fucking pretty good actually. Uh, so I feel like the current state of Battle Aces is good. I feel I feel like I enjoy it. And I really, really, really do like that Battle Aces has a 2v2 mode as well. 
And I would argue that 2v2 is actually more enjoyable in Battle Aces than 1v1. The variables that kind of exist in 1v1 start to get a little bit more thin and very narrow when your skill level increases. Uh, once you get good enough at the game and you play against people who are very, very good at the game, you start to realize that there are certain things in the game that are very abusable. And if you don't do something specific to like fight back against that, you probably die if you're doing something that's like not optimal. Uh, so like there are certain units that just kind of suck in 1v1 specifically at high levels of play. But in team games, there's so many more viable combinations that you can have with a teammate because when your composition goes from eight units total to 16 units total, it could actually make a unit that sucks if it doesn't have the right kind of support now suddenly is really good with more variety of support or more variety of other units being involved with it. So there is definitely more of a uh, landscape in terms of how interesting it is in 2v2 in, as compared to 1v1 in Battle Aces. I think 2v2 in that game is great. I, I would really be curious to see if they ever were uh, wanting to go even higher than 2v2, like maybe a 3v3 or something. Now you, suddenly you have another eight person roster, an eight unit roster. I feel like that could, you know, who knows? I don't know. We'll see where they want to go with it, but I am or I genuinely am already satisfied with 2v2 in Battle Aces. I think it's a great mode. I think it's super fun. I do think Battle Aces is falling into the same hole, the same problem though, that uh, Zero Space and Stormgate are in terms of community again. Uh, I, I've explained this a few times. I feel like I'm getting better at explaining it each time I do. Uh, but the point is, I feel like there should be something that players can be interested in uh, in some way in terms of also playing the game that is not just oh who's the best player right now who's like at the top of ladder um and one way i was kind of referencing that uh you know i'll, I'll touch on just super briefly is uh clan overall just everything associated with clan clans in general clan fucking uh area like clan channels clan rankings clan wars clan tournaments Something with community focus that makes people want to be a part of a clan, be a part of a community. And these things also are rewarded if you're like contributing to it. Like if you're, t let's say like the top 16 clans in 1v1 are in now a, who's the, which clan is, you know, the strongest in 1v1 or like, let's say you're in, you're representing your clan, but you're like representing your clan for who's the strongest clan in platinum currently and now you're like oh shit i'm representing the boys in plat right now I'm, I'm in guys like there's just a way for people to root for you and you to root for yourself and you to root for your friends like i feel like things like that need to exist in rts games a lot more some of the most fun memories i had in starcraft 2 which is zero community focus unless it's for tournaments was when i played a clan war for like a, you know there's like a, a clan league and it's like whoever wins the league gets fucking five thousand dollars or something and there's like 20 clans in the league. And some of the most fun memories I have in StarCraft 2 are literally me watching some of my teammates play in a clan war where I'm like, we got to win, dude. Or if like they're, they're like, hey, Vibe, you're next. And my teammate is losing. And then I go in and now I'm playing and everyone's like, oh, dude, like, good luck. I think he plays this way. This is sick. Like it, it's sharing information. We're all talking about it. And it's like, all right, let's go. Like, let's fucking do this. It was so fun because it's like, it's a community event where like you're representing your team and it, it, it's so it, it yes it's still 1v1 but it's so much more interesting uh and 2v2 can be the same way so i feel like there needs to and a game that kind of does that in a way that i feel like is more modern day uh more interesting is literally like mechabellum mechabellum is a mech based auto battler game where you can literally play in tournaments that are predetermined on certain days and if you sign up for it, it puts you in a bracket. There's no clan stuff in it, but it puts you in a bracket of like your skill level. And StarCraft 2 did the same thing as well. But like the StarCraft 2 tournaments, the reward for it was ladder points. Like no one gave a shit. No one played in it. Uh, I feel like these, like, there, if there was something, some reason why it could be interesting uh, community wise, like some type of reward, it could be in-game stuff. It could be cosmetic things. It could be something else. I don't know. It could be some reason why you go, man, that's cool. I'm glad like we won that. I'm glad this is, this is, I want to do this. I want to be a part of this. Um, 
it sounds fun. Uh, so I feel like Battle Aces does need to maybe do something in some way with community involvement. I think all of these games need to do something like that. Uh, all, all these RTS games that are coming out, like Zero Space, Stormgate, and Battle Aces. Uh, and none of them seem to be doing that. And I, I feel like that does create a problem if no one really focuses on things like this, which is every time you log into the game, all you're going to do is you're just going to you're just you're ge you're genuinely going to play it right away. You're not going to do anything to associate with other people, really, unless you already know them for the most part. I feel like there needs to be some type of common ground where you actually like get to know who the hell else is playing the game, even if they're not a streamer or a pro gamer who's being like represented in tournaments because they're like some of the world's best players. There needs to be like a way where you can meet your fellow gamer in a fun way that's not currently being annoyed by them because they're cheesing you or they're doing something annoying to you strategy wise uh, so that people can actually like feel like they're having fun playing the game and not just watching the game. Uh, I feel like whenever there's no uh, focus on things like that, it turns people more into like they just kind of like over time uh, get anxiety or they, they just kind of dissociate with it. And they're like, you know, I, I like watching it more than playing it. I like the game, but I'm not really somebody who wants to be like the tryhard sweaty guy. So I'm happier just to watch. Um, Battle Aces does have a bit more of an approachable gameplay style, which is still really fun at the end of the day. But I still think that it still needs more ways to make people more interested in playing the game. Like, just like there's, uh, like you can, you can take a game like Battle Aces, like StarCraft 2, whatever, and you could say unranked or ranked, and it automatically gives the game more weight and more value. Just like you can make a, a, like a community aspected event, and suddenly now 2v2 is more interesting than what it was before. Like, uh, I feel like there's this weird thing, like in StarCraft 2 was also where it was really prevalent, where if you play 1v1, it matters, but if you play 2v2, no one gives a shit. If you play 3v3, 4v4, nobody cares. If you have fun, good for you, but no one at the end of the day gives two shits about anything in team games at all. There's zero reason why people care. And if people care about something, then suddenly it makes it more fun. Just like for me, I'm like as somebody who plays, has played a lot of World of Warcraft in the past. If somebody said, hey, Vibe, make a hardcore character, character right now in World of Warcraft, just do it on like a classic server. I'd be like, I don't know if I really want, I, you know, there was a time when I did that and it was fun, but like right now today, I'd be like, that doesn't sound very fun. That sounds kind of, why would I do that? But if someone said, oh, Vibe, there's a there's an event happening uh, in three days from now, it starts at noon. And if you're like, you know, one of the hardcore players that makes it to a max level, and then you join one of the uh, guilds, like everyone has to join a guild then. If you join one of the guilds, if your guild like clears the content and like, fastest or some shit you get a reward or something some, something like a, a prize or i don't know it doesn't have to be a prize it's just an event you get to shit talk everyone else who didn't get to do it as, as well as you did because it's like an event where everyone's trying to do it and it's like a, it's like a, with intention to get people to get together to play it it i feel like that sounds more interesting to me that sounds like a much more more interesting experience other than just playing it just to play it by myself and i feel like if there were events and stuff that people can get excited about and be a part of that is more interesting in an RTS game. Like, I feel like if someone said, hey, Vibe, are you gonna, uh, like, are you gonna be available for the clan tournament that's happening on the 15th? And, uh, you know, we, we need, like, we would love it if you were gonna play in like our 2v2 lineup as like one of our, one of our groups. And I'd be like, oh, that sounds, you know, a lot more interesting than, uh, am I just gonna go queue random ladder 2v2 today? And am I gonna just like try to be a higher rank on the ladder? Like, yeah, sure, ladder is fine, ladder is fun. If, if the game is fun, then ladder is fun. But if the game has purpose to play it, and if there's like storylines that develop, like, oh yeah, last year, like, or last tournament, like these guys got first place, and now they're like seated at like number eight because they're like, their player, some of their players left the team, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, reasons and it, it, again it doesn't even just have to be for pro it could be like you could be a guy that gets to know everyone else in the platinum range because you're a platinum player and you're like 
guys, like, you know, I've been playing these Platinum Leagues for the last five months. They're super, I know all these other people. People are trying to recruit me to their team to represent their Platinum squad. And maybe you're on the verge of getting promoted and you're like, bro, I might, get, I might make it to Diamond now. I've been having so much, like, tournament runs here and I've been doing pretty well. I'm learning the game a lot. And now I'm going to join the Diamond League and I'm going to take a step up here and, like, my skill level personally. Whatever. I feel like there's a lot of ways where people can be a part of a community and be like, this is fun. I love being a part of this. It doesn't have to always be praising pros only. And I, for some reason, everyone's like, if you're not a pro, fuck you. You suck. <laughs> you are irrelevant. And that's terrible. Like, who the fuck wants to play anymore if that's how it always is? So I feel like these things... Uh, should be a, should be like more celebrated, more incentivized. I feel like community events should be more of a thing. So I would love to see that from any of these games. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think Stormgate has, or uh, Battle Aces, sorry, I'm, I've done three videos today. I'm talking about everything. Battle Aces has a good range of units in the game right now. It has a good range of options in the game right now. I think it is at the very least interesting gameplay to its, at, at, the, at its core. I would love to see how the game evolves and develops with more balance and more units and getting added to the mix and other things that might shake up the game as well. Uh, I haven't really looked at recent balance changes all that people have been talking about on the Reddit threads. So this is kind of like maybe a delayed video that I should have made a little like maybe like two weeks ago or something. Either way, still making it. And I think Battle Aces to its core is a great game. I think it's fun. I, I would love to see more things that celebrate it even better with more people being interested and other than just, you know, only people who are pro. Uh, and um, I, I feel like Battle Aces can... It, I feel like that game has wiggle room to kind of be creative and change up things that it already does, but I feel like the game does what it's supposed to do really well already. I feel like the game is designed to reach out to a broader range of gamer and maybe convert more gamers into RTS gamers and also appease people who are already RTS gamers by giving a very sleek, like fucking clean gaming experience. Because if you've played Battle Aces, it does feel AAA. Like it feels very good. Like the units respond super good. They respond great. That the interactions of units feel mostly good. And if the game gets more polished on top of what it already is, if there are like case by case ba uh, basis stuff where it's like this interaction's bad, let's maybe readdress this one specifically. Sure, that's very possible. But like the the, 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 the game itself to its core is actually pretty pretty polished, pretty smooth experience. It's it's honestly fun. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually pleasantly happy with, with Battle Aces and out of all the RTS games coming out in 2024, I do think I'm going to be playing Battle Aces the most. Uh, and we'll, I will, we'll readdress other games as we go and try to like, you know, give them a chance again. I still am not quitting those games. I'm still going to go back and play things like Zero Space and things like Stormgate, whatever a substantial thing that happens that like makes me feel the need to do that. Uh, but yeah, I feel like. Battle Aces is actually doing things really well, and I feel like it also is not making a campaign, and it's not making other stuff, other modes essentially, and both Stormgate and Zero Space are doing that, and I feel like that's actually, like you, you might say it's, it's a disadvantage for Battle Aces because you might think to yourself, like this is, this is like a number that is a thing. There are a lot of players that will play a campaign and will never touch multiplayer. And that does exist. And if these players buy the game to play the campaign and then quit, they still bought the game. But, uh, or they still bought something out of it, like the campaign content or whatever. And that's, that's, that's fair and that's valid. But I feel like the fact that Battle Aces is not making a campaign and they're not making other modes overall, at the, like maybe they'll make some in the future. They're focusing only on 1v1, 2v2 multiplayer only right now. I feel like it shows because it's really fucking polished and they don't have a lot of like work in other areas that they keep having to address to come back and focus on multiplayer, then make campaign, then make co-op, then make multiplayer, then go back to campaign. And then like, it's just a lot of things to balance around your plate there. Zero Space in instead is just focusing only on the multiplayer aspect and it feels polished. It feels like it's a actually like fully functioning good experience. So I'm very happy about that. And I would not be opposed to more things in Battle Aces in the future. 
but yeah, I, I feel like I really enjoy the the current experience that Battle Aces provides. So it, yeah, I, I, I feel like it's it's really just like, I, I want all RTS games that are being developed to kind of readdress their their mindset on what they even think community even means and why that matters because there's a lot of negativity towards that topic for whatever reason. Like, I, I, I'm i telling you right now, guys, as someone who's been playing RTS since the, the 90s, the 1990s, I have gone through a lot of experiences with RTS, and I do think Warcraft 3 was the peak RTS experience that I've ever gone through in terms of everything, all, all things considered, when it's like we're talking about the campaign, the customs, the, the, the community uh, battle net interface, uh, the latter games for not only team and solo like there are a lot of things that Warcraft 3 did that were W's I feel and I feel like that game is a, a great baseline to build off of and go further forward in the future and I feel like uh, current day RTS feels kind of like retail WoW where they just forgot how to make community even matter I honestly I feel like everything is like outsourced and like no one gives a fuck unless you're a pro uh or a streamer uh, like you're just like you're just like a ghost like no one cares is what it feels like um, uh, you guys might agree with that you might disagree with that but I, I feel like I, I want the player experience to be more interesting because I had a amazing experience in Warcraft 3 and I was not a pro gamer and I was not a streamer uh, I was still good at the game but like I was like a good ladder player but uh, I like I, I was not playing in tournaments professionally and I was not uh, like it was like before the pro scene really became a thing it was back in like 2002 2003 and stuff like that like those days I just laddering it up I was having so much fun just because the interface community aspect was so fun to be a part of and I feel like that's uh, th that's like uh, like your friends make games more fun and I feel like there's so many people that play RTS nowadays that probably don't have friends that play RTS games because it's an isolated experience I, and I genuinely started feeling that way myself through StarCraft 2 I was like man I'm isolated as fuck all the time when I log in this game and you know I'm, I'm, I just get on I play some ladder I feel like I don't I don't log in to talk to anybody I just log in and I play some games I, the only people I'm talking to is people that are saying like GG or GLHF or whatever or like some type of shit talk or, or are you that streamer? <laughs> you know, like like my my personal experience was very isolated in uh, uh, two, StarCraft Two and beyond, and I feel like there's a lot of similar experiences with these new RTSs that are coming out that have a similar feel, where it's like logging queue up, nobody gives a shit otherwise. Uh, it's just bad. That's not good. And my, I think that I think that's very bad. I think that that needs to be readdressed. And I, I bring this up to people, and a lot of times I get met with comments like, "Who cares? Who cares about that? Why would people care about that? Nobody gives a shit." Uh, I, I, you know what? Like, I, like, why would I give a fuck about that? Like, it's just a lot of like zero inspection on the idea, <laughs> and um, just lack of caring about like what it even means at all. And I feel like reasons like this, that, like I'm not saying this is the only reason, but I feel like this is a reason. I feel like it's definitely a bullet point to why RTS is not really like that sought out to be played by many people nowadays. Like RTS at the end of the day nowadays is a small community and I feel like it needs to evolve to change that. And I feel like ignoring anything community related is not evolving. I feel like that's just instead catering to like the pro elitist like you have to be at least 5,500 MMR to have any type of opinion on anything <laughs> stupid as fuck I feel like it's it's super dumb uh, I feel like people like every player matters because at the end of the day there are I, I have literally played against people that are like one day they'll I'll play them in ladder and they're like hey vibe Dude, you taught me everything I know. This is my first time in GM. And then I play them three years later and they're like the guy playing at a pro tournament. And they're like, oh, I got pretty good. Like people evolve over time. And there are always going to be some players that will like take the gauntlet and make it through it. 
but it's I feel like the current model of RTS not many people think that gauntlet sounds very fun and they just get turned away by it they're like ah I think I'll go play like a uh, battle royale or I'll play like an MMO or I'll play I'll play League of Legends I'll play an, uh, a fucking MOBA I'll play something else uh, and you know go spend my time that way because at the end of the day I feel like the, the isolating experience that RTS is nowadays is not that appealing to a lot of people and again, that's also the other reason why I feel like a lot of people nowadays, there should be surveys taken over this of like, hey, do you watch or do you, how much RTS would you say you play and how much RTS would you say you watch and which one do you do more of? When's the last time you played a game? If, it, if the answer is you watch more, I feel like so many more players nowadays just watch than play and uh, for RTS. And I feel like that is... Uh, you know, you know, I feel like I, I want more people playing. I, I feel like I, I think it would be cool if like, if there was a reason why a guy who is platinum level would log in and have the time of his life and log out and he wouldn't even know shit about what's going on in the pro scene. He'd be like, what? Oh, uh, who's dark again? I don't even know who that is. Because like, I got so much shit going on in my platinum division that like, I got, I got like all these people I gotta know. I got all my own connections here. Like I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing my thing and I'm having fun doing that. It's not like you have to be following the pro scene to matter. Uh, I feel like that's what needs, that, that's like what should happen. Cause I feel like your time matters on a game. Cause if it doesn't, why the fuck are you playing it? Right? Like if you, if you feel like you log into a game and you're like, well, my time doesn't fucking matter. I'm gonna log off. <laughs> That's fun, right? That's so fun. That's great. Um, so, I feel like that should be really like thought about. I feel like uh, our RTS could evolve so much more if things like that mattered. And uh, yeah, I I would love it if some RTS devs start like. Tr trying to address that more, I would say. And then like, you know, if it, if, if my ideas are terrible and, they, and no one ever gives a fuck and it, it literally ends up like StarCraft 2 tournaments, which I feel like there was not really a lot of support for that at all. It was like a tournament every hour or something like that. What was StarCraft 2 tournaments like? Cause that's a good example of a failed uh, process there. It was like a tournament every two hours and it would just seed you into whatever your ladder rank was. And then it would like, if your opponent no-showed, it would make you wait and then you would just get a buy and then it would it would be like these forced like every 30 minutes and the next round would happen and if, yeah, if your opponent didn't show up you just get free wins and the only point of playing in the tournament and if you, if you don't show there's no penalty if you just don't show up there's there's no reason why that affects you in a negative way but if you do play a game and you lose you lose ladder points and if you do play one of the games and you win you win ladder points and the only reason why the only the only unique thing you get is you get a trophy if you win the tournament or if you get runner up and it goes into a part of your profile that's like three buttons deep that's like click on you ma uh, view profile then match history then tournaments or something then fucking tournament list and then now you can look at your tournaments your your cat your your uh your your tournament like trophy case and no one gives a fuck by like, like, like people have to like deep dive and like fucking criminal background investigate you to look at your trophy case and then they're like well what does that do for them and what does that, what does that do for you it doesn't mean anything it's like oh man this guy has 23 gold trophies which means he basically won 23 ladder games because that was what the prize was it was ladder points it just it, like nothing matters and nothing means anything and i feel like one of the reasons why that was the case is because they were so fucking frequent that nobody cared. I feel like tournaments should be like at maximum two times a day. Maybe, maybe like try to like get some blocks of time here that are like high traffic for people at like two different parts of the day. I don't fucking know, but I, I feel like catering to every hour on the hour for another tournament means every tournament does not matter at all it's just it's just over oversaturated and means nothing uh so I, I feel like that's maybe a like step one um because i at least like warcraft 3 tournaments were a little bit more interesting they were one a day uh 
But I, I also think that like just coinciding ladder games with ladder point or uh, with tournament games, automated tournament games with ladder points, I think that's a terrible idea as well, because it literally punishes you for playing tournaments uh, sometimes. Let me let me explain to you an example of being punished by playing a tournament. I have played tournaments before on StarCraft 2, automated tournaments, where I am a GM player and I queue up for a tournament, and no other GM players queued up for a tournament, and barely anyone in Master League queued up for the tournament for this specific hour that I queued up for the tournament in. And it would, maybe I play three tournaments in a row and every tournament is like this. But I'll play a tournament and only eight people show up for like names on the list. And it's like five diamond players, two master players and one GM player. And I was the GM player. And then it's like, I beat my first opponent in the tournament and it's a diamond player. And it gives me plus zero ladder points for the result, for the reward there. And I'm like, oh, so I, I essentially played a game here to not lose ladder points. If I win, I don't lose ladder points, but if I lose, I lose like negative 60. Uh, and then I play the semifinals and I play against the uh, another diamond player because the master's player no-showed and he never, he just didn't even show up. And now I'm playing a diamond player in the semifinals and I get zero plus zero again. And then I, now I, it's the grand finals and I have a master's player who made it through the other side of the bracket. I beat him and I get plus two because his MMR is like fucking like 4480 Masters 3. And I'm like, uh, you know, like at that point, I'm maybe I'm like 5600, like top 40 GM. And no one's fucking playing because no one gives a shit. Because it, you, you just, you're fighting for ladder points and all you're really doing is you're putting a timer on your ladder games. You're like, if I laddered, I can play a game and then play a game and then play a game and there's no interruption in my flow here. But if I play a tournament, I have a 30 minute timer that exists that I have to make sure I'm available for, which means I might have to quit my current game I'm in. Or I look at the timer and it's like, I have 12 minutes until my tournament match happens. So I have to sit there and wait and just wait and not play anymore and just wait for 12 minutes so I can play that match. And then like you, the tournament comes around and the guy no shows and you're like, oh, so now I just don't even play a game. There's just no game. Like it's, it's just because he's in the middle of a game and he doesn't want to quit. He's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to fucking quit this game to play that tournament. I'm just gonna say fuck the tournament because it's just for ladder points, anyways. Like, there's no fucking reason why you care. It's a terrible system. There's zero thought into like making it interesting. Uh, so I, that's that's like a failed uh, thing, and that's that's not what I'm saying is like what should be added into like future games. So, uh, yeah, these things are relevant to talk about because I feel like these things are community focused events, community focused ideas. And I really, really do. Again, I'm going to stress it one more time. I feel like RTS games need something community related uh, to where everyone doesn't just disregard everything besides pro, because I feel like all that really does is it just makes everyone feel like they would rather watch them play because nothing matters uh, that they do because no, who gives a fuck? So yeah, that's uh, that's my overall opinion. Again, I, I've talked about that, that a lot today uh, with different videos, but I I hope you guys maybe you know whatever video you watched, whether it be my Stormgate, my Zero Space, or my Battle Aces video. I hope you uh, enjoyed listening to what I had to talk about or what I had to ramble on about. I hope you found it interesting. Um, but yeah, I think Battle Aces to its core is actually a great game right now, and I am genuinely happy to play more of it. I like the state that it's in as a game right now, and. Uh, I feel like the biggest thing I would love for that game to just evolve even more is more maps and more units and get some more variety and that it, that it already has. Get more, even more in there. And uh, that would be fucking cool. And go from there. Uh, but otherwise, I think the game, in it, uh, to what it is and what it's provided so far, is actually really fun. Uh, so... Thumbs up for Battle Aces right now. I'm actually really loving it. It's actually a positive review. I gave a bit more of a negative review for, for Stormgate and Zero Space. But Battle Aces has actually been really fun. So thanks for watching. Um, I will see you guys in the next video, whatever it is, whatever I'm rambling on about. And uh, yeah, thanks for your time. And I will see you next time. Peace, guys.